Hello to everyone. My name is Wojtek Midlash. I'm a head neck surgical oncologist at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. And I want to give you a quick recap of a seminar we held at the National Academy meeting in Philadelphia on sort of what every otolaryngologist should know about parotid tumor management. Again, obviously complex issue. We can spend a week uh, to have a seminar on this, uh, but I think it, it can, you can, we can hit some highlights and some big points in terms of trying to how to move through the workup and management of these patients and get them through the treatment they may need or may not need. Uh, I think the main issue is again, that there's you know, 30 or 40 tumor types, whether they're primary uh, tumors of the gland or they're spreading to the lymphness of the gland. Uh, as we all know, good news is that most of them are benign, but not all. And I think that's the challenge is trying to figure out which are the ones that we need to worry more about and sort of do more of a workup, but also obviously do a different type of treatment for them. So the key things we sort of handled as a, as a panel is to really have a systematic approach to these. I think having, uh, looking at the history uh, in terms of the timing of symptoms, trajectory of symptoms, what symptoms they are, the exam, sort of what you find on the exam, not only by palpation, but also visualization. Uh, that includes sort of a, a part of that is also imaging, what imaging you choose in terms of how to work these up. Then obviously a biopsy. I think we all decided, not decided, we all agreed that really these days that all these tumors or most of these tumors should really be receiving a, a fine needle aspiration or biopsy attempt to get more information. Again, there's some, there's some challenges with that, but then putting all that together and sort of the art of medicine, right? The gut feeling as to when you may need to worry about a certain tumor and how you should approach it. So it's sort of an important part. So I'll just break to the goal for all uh, sort of the, the, the flow of these and sort of how we think about them. So in terms of history, so uh, the type of symptoms, right? Feeling changes, sensation changes, weakness, paralysis, trismus, right? That's the one that really worries me. On the exam, is it mobile, not mobile? Does it feel inflamed? Um, is there overlying skin changes? Obviously, are there lymph nodes involved or uh, are worrisome? And th those are all things that should make you sort of uh, think about other things. Then, then there's obviously the imaging. I think the imaging MRI, I think we all agree that it's probably the gold standard and the best. Oftentimes these patients come to you with a CT scan uh, we showed pictures of sort of what the CT would show, and what the MRI would show, and, and would really change your approach to these and your worry factor based on what the MRI really shows. I think the things that the MRI can help us look at really the infiltration and the quality of the capsule of the tumor, the density of the tumor, looking at ADC mapping, which is part of the diffusion weighted imaging. A lot of the MRI machines and now most neuroradiologists will comment on that is when you see these higher density lesions are the ones that you need to worry more about malignancy. Uh, the other one is obviously the biopsy, and these are the, the, the place where I think we're still learning more. There's the new Milan grading system of these tumors, and the issue is, again, trying to figure out what those categories mean. They're trying to copy what they did for the thyroid cytopathology and sort of extend that over to salivary. But I think there's good data for it, but the ones that we struggle with are obviously the atypia of unknown significance, or AUS, or the salivary gland uh, neoplasms of unknown malignant potential. A lot to say, but the sums. These are the ones that we need to sort of uh, worry about. And I think it all deserves a discussion with the pathologist to make sure that they not only give you the category, they give you any cytologic information. Is the atypia in the nuclei or the cells? Are there any worrisome sort of findings, uh, even if minimal? And then sort of what they think kind of push them to give you a differential of what they can tell you based on what they saw on the biopsy. And then, of course, the, there's the gut feeling, right? They're putting everything together and, and putting all three things that history and exam may worry more than what the imaging on the side of pathology shows. We have plenty of examples of that where the worry was, was welcome, meaning the pathology was different than what the imaging and the side of pathology showed, but there was worrisome symptoms and sort of trajectory of things and on exam findings that, that warranted more of an aggressive approach to these. So these are all things that, you know, listen to your gut feeling. This will help sort of counsel you with the patients, but also their family members and sort of help you kind of work through the workflow and getting patients to the right surgery. And I think those are really the, the, the main points of the seminar. Took a lot of great questions, went over some cases as well to sort of show a lot of these changes and challenges that we all face.